pray for the welfare of the whole humanity. Shanti, 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 Hariyo, Sat Sat, Om, Om, Sthapakaya Chadarmasya, Sarvadharma Swarupine, Sthapakaya Chadarmasya, Sarvadharma Swarupine, Avatar Varishthaya Ramakrishna Yate Nama Asato Madat Gamaya Tamaso Majo Tergamaya Asato Tamaso ma jyote gamaya Vratyor ma gamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us bow down to Sri Ramakrishna The embodiment of all religions the Supreme God incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. We have been discussing how to overcome all the problems confronting our life. Sri Ramakrishna has suggested engage yourself in spiritual practices Develop love and devotion. Come closer and closer to God. All the problems get dissolved. You will be free from all suffering. We have been discussing this subject since two, three days classes. Problems cannot be solved by worldly methods. You may have temporary relief, but it's only through spiritual approach it is possible to solve all the problems. And we have discussed many points and in the last class we were telling about transcending consciousness. We are in different levels of consciousness. At every level of consciousness we have certain set of experiences. If you are able to transcend your consciousness to the higher level, you will be able to solve the problems of suffering. You will be able to resolve clearly the mysteries of the life. And there are many instances 
where we find by transcending consciousness one gets released from suffering maybe the body is suffering on account of some pain some ailment but if a person is able to transcend his consciousness even though the pain is there he does not feel it we have many examples we have the life of the sage ramana maharshi who had a tumor it was causing a lot of pain and discomfort the doctor came and saw and said well the tumor should be removed it should be cut off it should not be allowed to spread those days there were no anesthesia so you can imagine how terrible it would be but ramana maharshi without any hesitation he said all right cut off remove it and the doctor took the knife and began to cut you can't cut away the all the things immediately you have to remove all the tissue so and it takes a lot of time but there was no reaction on the face of ramana maharshi he was quite calm and peaceful as he was before he had not closed his eyes with open eyes as if nothing is happening to him how could he do that because he could transcend his consciousness to that level so transcending consciousness is very important step in our spiritual life we must raise our consciousness we must know the technique and do it that's the way to come closer to god that's the way how you can transcend your sense bound consciousness it is a fact that it is not easy to transcend your ego it is very prominent but in order to experience the highest bliss in order to experience you are free from all suffering free from all bothersations you have to transcend ego there is another famous example i want to give you so that it makes you very clear the point which i am talking about totapuri the great teacher who taught vedanta to shri ramakrishna who had realized brahman the supreme consciousness the universal consciousness he didn't have any suffering but then he had not completely overcome the ego consciousness so he was confident about his experience and he was very conscious about himself then he was to be taught a lesson that there is 
the power of the brahman working in the world one has to accept it if you want to experience the reality completely fully but totopuri though he realized brahman he didn't accept the maya for him it is not existing for him only brahman nothing more than that so when shri ram krishna realized the dvaitik reality the oneness of existence the supreme brahman consciousness shri ram krishna realized it and totopuri was very happy that his disciple could realize in 3 days which he took 40 years to realize the truth but next day when he went to see shri ram krishna shri ram krishna was as usual dancing with great joy clapping his hands and singing on divine mother so that was a puzzle to totapuri and he did not appreciate after the realization of advaita there is nothing more to know anything that was his conception but shri ramakrishna had told that one has to accept brahman and his power both are real they are inseparable it's like fire and its power to burn you can't separate them anyway so he was uh, feeling too much confident about his realization and uh, he would not budge from his thinking that way but then it so happened he developed severe stomach pain which he could not control in spite of his uh, well established uh, meditation and though he had many times withdrawn raised his mind to higher level of consciousness this time he could not do it because the pain was so persisting it would not allow the mind to move in any manner it is like a slip disk a man who had slip disk he can't move this way that way if he moves shooting pain will come and that shooting pain will persist for a long time it is just like that so he was passing through that type of uh, very uncomfortable suffering a person who had realized brahman should not have any suffering at all why did he suffer now that means he has got some problem what is the solution to that problem he has to accept the power of brahman maya which he was not doing now the situation had come that he should accept it but it needed some time so he tried and tried he could not do then he said all right i am sure i am not this body why should i why should i care about this body i am very different i am not this i am pure consciousness nitya shuddha buddha mukta chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham i am that why should i bother intellectually he is right but in spite of his asserting himself that way he couldn't be free from discomfort in fact he would feel the pain increasing more and more more and more it is not killing him but it is it is more than death he could not bear that but he has no power 
he thought he, he can do so finally he, con- he decided that let this body be thrown away into this holy river ganga flowing it's a vast like ocean in calcutta you must see that ganga vast and very deep and he said he can just cast off the body there so he went there thinking brahman trying to focus his mind on the brahman and just dived into the river but it is not allowing him to drown it is like vasudeva carrying the baby krishna on the waters of jamuna it is where jamuna waters are very deep and nobody can dare to cross the jamuna waters but vasudeva was walking as if there is a road that is the divine power so here he is almost crossing the ganga he is almost gone to the other shore then he was stunned oh what is this then his ego was humbled that is what needed that ego that root was there that should have been uprooted that was done by shri ramakrishna so once that ego gone then he was all blissful and he was free from all bothersations no more suffering all the problems are solved once and for all afterwards he came he had the vision of the divine mother on the ganga itself then he praised the mother brahma shakti is very nicely described in great master so the point which i am trying to fix here is raising your level of consciousness finally you have to go beyond ego if you hold on to that ego you will have some kind of suffering some kind of problem suppose you are in deep sleep you don't have any problem you are quite jolly happy because you don't feel that ego consciousness there anyway that's what we have seen in the lives of all these great mahatmas who have shown to us that it is possible to raise the mind to the higher level of consciousness there is another swami his name was swami shivananda ji one of the direct disciples of shri ramakrishna all the devotees and brahmacharins monks they all bowed down to swami ji and they went back that is a tradition and swami ji went to take rest it was night about 11 o'clock suddenly he developed asthma he had asthma problem he could not breathe he tried and tried and tried nothing happened he thought probably he will not survive if it continues like this he will not survive with the body it is not possible to dwell any more in this body if it goes like this so he thought well let me transcend my consciousness he did he did whole night he was in meditation next day he was quite free all the inmates monastic members they all came to bow down swami was cheerful they were all inquiring swami did you have good sleep yesterday oh yesterday do you want to know it he explained <laughs> he began to explain to them and they were all surprised to hear that it is just that means the mahatmas they had that power 
any moment they want, they can go up. It is uh, climbing the staircase, going up and down. It is easy for them. Well, so, we have to learn the technique uh, of raising the consciousness. The yoga lifts consciousness from a lower level to a higher level. I was talking about that in my last class. It involves two basic processes. One is purification, second is concentration. Both are important to rise your level of consciousness. This can be done in different ways. Depending on the nature of the aspirants, the yoga has been classified into different types. So, whatever may be the methods, different ways, they all aim at one thing. What is that? Transformation of consciousness. This is something everyone has to do himself. Accordingly, Sri Ramakrishna and Swami Vivekananda have emphasized frequently everyone has his own yoga. At first, this process of transformation is restricted to certain limited parts of the personality and certain times of the day. But through practice, the transformation involves the whole personality and goes on all the time. To convert one's whole life into yoga and meet the problems of life through yogic consciousness, this is the spiritual solution to life's problems that the great teachers of the Upanishads and yoga have placed before mankind. So suffering has come in order to give awakening to you. Suffering is there because of ignorance. Get rid of it. That is possible only through spiritual knowledge. This solution is based on self-effort and faith in one's own higher self. It calls for extraordinary courage. It is very important. The Upanishad says, Atmana Vindate Viryam. Ken Upanishad, it tells that through the Atman, one attains strength. The practical significance of this important maxim had remained neglected for centuries until Swami Vivekananda rediscovered it and taught it. That's why you find in Sri Ramakrishna, in Vivekananda's teachings, how much he's talking about strength. How much is talking about Atma Shraddha?
the same thing uh, Lord Krishna has said in the Gita, which Swami Vivekananda would quote very emphatically. Chudram radhya daubalyam takpo tishta parantava. Chudram radhya daubalyam. Get rid of this unmanliness, weakness, the fear that you are helpless, you can't do this, you can't do that. That kind of desperation. Get rid of that. Get up. Awaken yourself. So that teaching of Sri Krishna was very much quoted by Vivekananda. And Swamiji was a personification of strength. You can see his photograph. The practical significance of this important maxim has been given to us by Swami Vivekananda. Swamiji showed that Atman is the source of all power and perfection which can be called forth and brought to bear upon the problems of life. He made this idea the foundation of his new gospel of practical Vedanta. Practical Vedanta is a gospel of Vivekananda. And a memorable verse which every spiritual aspirant should inscribe in his soul. Swamiji has condensed his message of self-strength in Complete Works, volume number 6. Swamiji says, Kinnama Rodhishi Saketvai Sarva Shaktihi Amantrayasva Bhagavan Bhagadam Swarupam Trelokya Meta Dakilam Tavapadamule Atmaivahi Prabhavate Na Jadaha Kadachit Swamiji has given this poem. Its meaning is Why weepest thou, my friend? In you is all power, O mighty one. Summon up your true self which is the embodiment of all perfection and all the three worlds will be at your feet. Spirit alone triumphs, not matter. Atma vahi prabhavate na jadaha kadachit That's the last sentence of the poem. Then a question may be asked is this self-effort the only way? Is there no other way for those who do not have the requisite knowledge and strength to depend entirely on their own inner resources? So herein comes the importance of theistic side of Vedanta. The great teachers of Bhakti devotion have emphatically declared that there is a power which is far superior to self-effort. They are very conscious of that power. They are very definite and sure about that power. And that is Grace, Kripa, the limitless and infallible power of the personal God. It's also called Anugraha, it's also called as Prasada, it's also called as Kripa. These are all terms used for grace. The ultimate reality is regarded in Vedanta not only as the impersonal absolute 
but also as the personal god the supreme deity who dwells in all beings as the inner controller formless aspect is true at the same time god with form is equally true that is how the worship of personal god came into importance you can worship god in a concrete form you can talk to him you can enjoy bliss in the company of god then if you aspire for formless aspect that experience also will be given to you by the same god whom you are worshiping all your life through prayer through worship through self surrender and devotional exercises it is possible to contact this cosmic person cosmic person virat purusha ishvara we say call by any name there is a form as long as the creation lasts god's forms are there to help and guide all the beings in whatever way they want guidance god is there to give so otherwise how do you feel the impact of god's grace because there is personal god because there is god in his form different divine form you are able to experience his grace and when you come closer to god you enjoy more and more that bliss that's what sri ramakrishna said when he was trying to explain the tides when ganga flowing from north to south when it comes closer to the ocean the whole river every now and then changes its direction because of the impact of its contact with the ocean it runs back south to north for a short distance the tidal wave 18 feet high i have seen that it's a fantastic sight remarkable i have not seen like that anywhere even even in ocean you won't see 18 feet <laughs> it's so beautiful to see that and because of the impact of the ocean it's as if mother ganga is joyfully jumping in joy you feel that way same way when you approach god you will be dancing in joy what problems all look like trash so when the aspirant succeeds in doing worship of the personal god divine power flows into his soul and transforms his consciousness more quickly and thoroughly than self effort ever can then self effort individual yoga becomes a part of divine yoga divine yoga yoga whether human or divine it means one thing 
depending on the spirit alone and not matter it means finding a solution to the problems of life in the spirit within and not on the material world outside if you are trying to do that it will be a thorough failure yoga whether human or divine has the same end in view to transcend the ego and the sorrows of life transcending the ego very important point nirahankara we should become free from ego meaning we should go beyond the ego state hence the gita defines yoga as the separation of the soul from the combination of sorrows tam vidya dukkha samyog vyogam yoga sangitam in the chapter 6 bhagavad bhagavad gita lord krishna says that is that all that spiritual solution means does god give only spiritual strength and knowledge to remain unaffected by the sorrows of life does he not intervene in the affairs of his devotees and remove their sorrows and difficulties the great incarnations saints and scriptures of the world assure us that god is not a passive witness of the drama of life but helps guides and protects those who depend on him that's the point according to patanjali the type of body the soul assumes its longevity and its experience of happiness and misery they are all determined by one's past karma deeds sati mule tad vipake jatyatyup jatyatur bhogaha it's a common belief that the effect of past karma cannot be counteracted by ordinary means that's a general law but devotees of god believe that the lord can change man's karma by his infallible will the whole creation is an act of divine yoga or divine play Lord Krishna says in the Gita, "Na cha matsthani bhuta ani pashime yoga mai shwaram. Na tu maam shakya se drastu mane na ivasvachakshu sa divyan dada amite chakshu hu pashime yoga mai shwaram." Very clear. However, a true devotee does not ask for worldly benefits. the bhagavatam says that when akrura a pious charioteer of lord krishna he went to brindavan to take lord krishna to madura he had cherished many desires in his heart but as soon as he saw krishna what happened most wonderful miracle occurred that miracle was all his desires got fulfilled before his asking 
referring to this the great maharshi shuka tells what remains unattainable when the lord who is the abode of lakshmi the goddess of prosperity is pleased and yet o king those who are exclusively devoted to attain seek nothing other than the lord kemalabhyam bhagavati prasanne shri niketane tatha pitatpara rajannahi vanchanti kinchana which meaning i said just now swami brahmananda ji one of the direct disciples of shri ramakrishna the first president of the ramakrishna order in his eternal companion he deals with this subject and says that why man is suffering because of his ignorance what is this ignorance is due to because of the sense of ego when a man is free from the egoism surrendering his life surrendering his mind surrendering his intellect at the blessed feet of the lord of all renouncing everything that he calls his own then he becomes blessed indeed that man alone is truly happy that man alone would be free from all bothersomes of problems the person who has given whole body whole mind whole intellect everything of himself he is not bothered about any things again to take an example from bhagavat a great devotee one of the greatest devotees i should say sudama very great he and lord krishna studied together under the teacher lord krishna went to madhura and sudama uh, went to his poor cottage and led a householder life wife children but he didn't have much means to satisfy the desires of this family family was big but the wife was uh, very much disturbed she was bothered by many problems and problems were mounting day by day and one day she called well you claim lord krishna is your best friend why why don't you go and ask him for a little help what was sudama's way of life throughout his life throughout his throughout the day he would spend in prayers and meditation singing etc that means inwardly his whole being was at lord krishna outwardly the body is existing that's all so wife is facing all the bothersomes all the problems whereas the husband sudama is free from all those problems he is dancing in joy shedding tears of joy but the wife is crying crying no food no proper food to feed the children please go do something sudama agreed immediately the reason was he got a chance to see lord krishna what a great chance so then he said all right i am going should i go empty hand 
is a tradition all that fine values are going away now <laughs> anybody visiting any home they would bring something bring something the idea of giving home but finally she brought some uh, flattened rice some kind of rice is there and uh, that a bundle she made a bundle at the corner of the cloth she tied it and take this to lord krishna <laughs> of course she went and it's a big story i am not going to the details and lord krishna treated him very very well he treated sudama as his own and he told rukmini now one of my most beloved disciples devotee is coming now give him a good bath give him most delicious food and when he came lord krishna himself went and embraced him ecstatic joy all over then he is returning back he never asked about his family and uh, the wife asked so many botherations were there so many problems for a moment he thought what happened i didn't ask krishna what will wife feel about when i go probably he may not allow me she may not allow me inside the home if i go so like that he was worrying it's a temporary worry <laughs> but when he went near the home he could not recognize his home in the place the big palace has come up by the divine power of lord krishna all the children they were wearing new clothes the wife is wearing ornaments new saree and so on everywhere is the joy joy and joy so that means what here is a person who has no ego he is totally surrendered to lord krishna nothing is his own that was enough lord krishna's grace flowed immensely and they were uplifted that means one should devote oneself to spiritual practices then he will attain knowledge and devotion then his heart will overflow with love and sympathy for mankind he will also find out how unnecessary is man's suffering carrying as it does the mine of bliss within himself there are two paths always in this world one good and the other pleasant one leads to everlasting peace and the other leads to suffering choose therefore the path of good swami shardana ji another disciple of shri ramakrishna he said because we have alienated ourselves from god we are suffering there is suffering that means you are away from god that means your mind is not thinking about god that means you are not practicing any spiritual practices all troubles will cease when we go back to the center and rest in him are you really separate from him you feel you are separated because you think so else you are always connected with him in all the three states of consciousness but mere talking about it will not do you must realize it so that concludes my 
subject take to spiritual practices time is running on running fast what you do you will get everyone has to work for oneself for one's realization if you have to be free from suffering immediately come towards god be practical be sincere be honest be honest in your in your endeavors then you will see the glory of god then you will see how you are free from all the problems in life well sorry 850 and <laughs> read some passage page 537 it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon the master had been conversing with the mukherjee brothers and the other devotees when radhika goswami a vaishnava scholar arrived and bowed before him this was his first visit to the master radhika goswami to get seat master asked him are you a descendant of advaita an intimate companion of shri chaitanya goswami said yes sir at this the master saluted him with folded hands master said you are descended from advaita goswami you must have inherited some of his traits a sweet mango tree produces only sweet mangoes and not sour ones of course it happens that some trees produce large mangoes and some small that depends on the soil isn't that true goswami humbly said sir what do i know master whatever you may say others will not let you off so easily brahmins however imperfect they may be are worshiped by all on account of their having been born in the lines of great sages to him he said tell us the story of the shankar chila shankar chila a bird similar to the kite yam sat in silence master said if one of your ancestors was a great soul he will certainly pull you up however unworthy you may be when king duryodhan and his brothers were taken captive by the gandharvas yudhishthira released them in spite of the fact that king duryodhan was his enemy and had banished him to the forest besides one must show respect to the religious garb even the mere garb recalls to mind the real object chaitanya once dressed an ass in a religious garb and then prostrated himself before it <laughs> why do people bow before a shankachila when kamsa was about to kill the divine mother she flew away taking the form of shankachila so even now people salute the bird the following story is recorded in connection with the birth of shri krishna kamsa the king of mathura was a very personification of evil his god fearing sister devaki was married to vasudeva Devaki was married to Vasudeva. When Kamsa came to know that a son of Devaki would be his slayer and that his sister was already expecting a child, he was about to kill her. But he spared her life on her promise to deliver her child to him as soon as it was born. Both Vasudeva and Devaki wept kept in prison under a strong guard in the prison even uh, seven sons were born to devaki one after another and they were all slain by the evil kamsa the eighth child was shri krishna 
immediately after his birth vasudeva through divine help took him across the jamuna river to the village of gokulu where nanda and his wife yashoda lived to them had just been born a daughter who was an incarnation of the divine power shri krishna was exchanged for the girl who was then delivered to kamsa as a new born child of devaki kamsa was about to kill her when she flew into the sky in the form of a bird the shanka chila remarking that kamsa's slayer was growing up at gokul this is why shanka chila is held in respect even eventually shri krishna killed kamsa any questions to ask 3 4 minutes are there any comments observations ignorance is a general term ignorance is a general term that means the ignorance means suppose you are undergoing some kind of suffering if you don't know the methodology how to overcome that suffering this is termed as ignorance and uh, some of the facts that occur on account of the pollutions in the atmosphere or for some reason or from an account of malnutrition and so may various other reasons also the body may suffer for some reason but the point here to be noted is that the suffering becomes more acute and you feel more discomfort the more you are identified with the body but it also is also true as long as you remain conscious of the body what are the elements of the body you suffer for example in shri ramakrishna's life itself we have seen once he was uh, in ecstasy nobody was there to take care of him and he broke his arm he fell down and that uh, that injury it was causing pain terrible pain and he used to say will this pain go it's so much pain i am having he was telling on one side pain is there but he is shri ramakrishna is telling that pain is there because at the moment he is his level of consciousness is identified with the body but at the same time that never prevented him to raise his mind and he would rise and he would talk cheerfully as if there nothing happened to him so the point here is you must analyze and find out the root cause of all suffering is ignorance that is a very broad based term and uh, that can be overcome only through spiritual knowledge so through spiritual knowledge whatever the problems you are facing you are able to find the solution that's our uh, subject whereas by applying worldly uh, methods you will not be able to overcome the suffering though you may find some relief for the time being so spiritual solution is the only way for all the problems confronting us that's the point so suffering it it's a it's a question of feeling sometimes the person feels so much detached towards his body and he is not bothered about the body that means he is free from botheration that means he is free from suffering how was he free from botheration because his 
consciousness was fixed on the higher level and it would never come down and he is not bothered whether the body lives, whether the body dies, he is not bothered about that. That's the idea. Yeah. But suffering is not a suffering. Suffering is not a suffering for the spiritual person. He doesn't feel suffering at all. He feels everything because he doesn't feel identified. He enjoys it. Suffering, enjoy it. He is not bothered. If it comes, all right. If it doesn't come, all right. That attitude. So that attitude one develops only through spiritual knowledge and through spiritual practices. It is possible. So whether you, because many times this question comes, whether, does really God stay like us, like, a, like us, does He live somewhere? That question is constantly being asked. That point I have made it very clear, as long as this creation is there, God's forms also are there. If God's form was not there, Sri Ramakrishna would not have seen Kali. He would not have talked with her. He would not have told Vivekananda, you can also see, you can also talk. That means God is there. But we don't have that uh, special type of eyes to see that. Lord Krishna himself tells, when he gave Vishwarup Darshan to Arjun, you fellow, you can't see with your ordinary eyes. I will give you special eyes. He gave Divya Chakshus. Then only he could see Vishwarup Darshan. Like that, to see the abode of God, you must rise to that particular level of consciousness. Then only you can see the abode of God and His glory, everything. Yeah. Now I, the point I, here was suffering in the physical sense. Is in but he is not bothered about the suffering. Hmm. That is very important. Suffering, he himself said, he accepted the suffering. You must know that. It's not Why did he suffer? Sri Ramakrishna himself tells. Why did I suffer? Because I accepted all the resultant effect of uh, the karmas done by Girish Chandra Ghosh. So this cancer has come to burn all those uh, bad uh, effects of the deeds done by him. So Sri Ramakrishna is suffering for him. Why? Out of his infinite love. Mother suffers for the sake of the child. Why? Because of her love towards the child. When love is there, suffering is not counted. That's the point. So, Lord, Lord Christ also suffered. But Lord Christ himself said, he knew what the people would do. In fact, he told the disciples, we are going there, they will do all these things, and they will uh, kill me, etc., etc. He told everything, he knew. But he was not afraid of. He did not bother him. Even though they were nailing him on the cross, he prayed for them. That is the point. So, when you raise the level of consciousness, then you won't feel the suffering. Though, from others' point of view, that suffering is visible. That's the point. So we shall stop. Chant the name of the Lord and His glory unceasingly, that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire, holy lust, raging furiously within. O name, stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart, opening its cup to knowledge of thyself. 
O self, down deep in the waves of his bliss, tasting his nectar at every step, bathing in his name that bought for very souls. Various are thy names, O Lord, in each and every name thy power resides. No times are set, no rites are needful for chanting of thy name. So vast is the mercy, how huge then is my assuredness, who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name. O my mind, be humbler than a blade of grass, be patient and forbearing like a tree, take no honor to thyself, give honor to all, chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, Mine is the prayer for wealth or retinue, the playthings of lust or the toys of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for Thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is Thy servant, O sweet one. In Thy mercy, consider him as dust beneath Thy feet. Oh, how I long for the day when in strange separation from the O Lord will be as a thousand years, when my heart burns with its desire and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet, let me be in unwavering devotion, neither imploring the embrace of thine arms, nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence, though it tears my soul asunder. <coughs> o thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees, do with me what thou wilt, for thou art my heart's beloved, and thou and thou alone. O Lord, lead us from the unreal to the real, lead us from darkness to light, and lead us from death to immortality. May all be free from dangers, may all realize what is good, may all be actuated by noble thoughts, may all rejoice everywhere. May all be happy, may all be free from disease, May all realize what is good. May none be subject to misery. May the wicked become virtuous. May the virtuous reign tranquility. May the tranquil be free from bonds. May the freed make others free. May good betide all people. May the sovereign righteously rule the earth. May all beings ever attain what is good. May the worlds be prosperous and happy. May the clouds pour rain in time. May the earth be blessed with crops. May all countries be freed from calamity. May holy men live without fear. May the Lord, the destroyer of sins, the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied. For he being pleased, the whole universe becomes pleased. He being satisfied, the whole universe feels satisfied. <coughs>